Are you ready to unleash your full potential and become unstoppable in your success and leadership? Welcome to the Unleashed and Unstoppable podcast, where we provide powerful insights and strategies for coaches, corporate leaders, and entrepreneurs. I'm Alexanne Carter. And I'm Carol Register, and we're certified master neuro coaches who are passionate about helping you overcome your limiting beliefs and optimize your performance. Each week, we'll be sharing actionable tips and strategies using neuroscience from interviews with industry experts to solo episodes to help you live a life of power, purpose, and possibility on your own terms. Join our community of like-minded individuals. Hit subscribe now and let's be unleashed and unstoppable together. Hey there, how are you guys? I am so excited to be here with you with the powerhouse, Lila Veronica. She is incredible and I'm super excited to introduce her to you today because it's all about being unleashed and unstoppable, right? And she's going to give us some amazing tools about how we can do that through dynamic movement, dynamic posturing, right? Would you tell us all about yourself, Leela? I have so enjoyed connecting with you and learning about what you bring to people. And I'm excited for you, listener, to have this information. Uh, Carol, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And and, uh, I really appreciate this podcast and what you're doing here. And I believe that every single human has the capacity to live their biggest, boldest, most wildest dreams, if they so choose. Yes. And you're another woman who helps uh, people do that. And so I'm really grateful to be here. I'm really grateful for anybody listening right now, because your time is the most important thing here on on the planet Earth. It is the currency of humanity. And so I really appreciate the time that you're spending here to learn about dynamic movement, dynamic posturing, and so my name is Leela Veronica, like you said, Carol, and I'm an author and a speaker and a coach, and I help business leaders and entrepreneurs and organizational leaders all across the world elevate their performance through mastering the physical component of their life. So uh, there's a lot of people doing mindset work, which is amazing. And there's a lot of people doing energetic work, which is amazing. And what I do is I combine the mind energy and bring in the body piece, the 3D, I would like to say the 3D flesh suit piece <laughs> <laughs> so that, um, you know, leaders can embody their highest essence, their biggest goals, and they can actually perform at a higher level. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, you know, today we're going to talk about dynamic posture, dynamic movement, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the the myths and mistakes people make in their body as they show up. And then I'll talk a little bit about how to shift their body, uh, shift your body into more of a shape and a feeling state so that you actually can move forward and get what you want, receive what you want faster. I love this. I love this. Um, It's so powerful, right? Because one of the things we talk about here on the podcast, Alex, Leanne and I, is that we're integrated beings. And when you work on any one area of your life, because of that, all areas elevate. I love the quote by JFK that says, a rising tide raises all boats. And so coming at our health and wealth from the different components and aspects of, you know, as you were mentioning, the mind and the body and the energy, um, it's so powerful, isn't it? It gives us the ability to have our cake and eat it too. And so um, tell us more. What well, This is super exciting. I want to know more about what is dynamic posturing? What does this mean? And yeah. take us there. <laughs> I'll take you there. So what I'll do today is I'll tell you a little bit what is not dynamic okay. posture, and then I'll tell you what is. So I am a former academic. I used to teach environmental policy at the Ohio State University. I spent about 15 years in the environmental science and policy world doing consulting and working for nonprofits and um, organization, uh, state 
state um, government organizations, and then and got into academia. And so I'm I'm a classic high achiever. I've been selling blow pops since I was a kid. I've been a lifelong entrepreneur. I've always had a side hustle before they even called it a side hustle. <laughs> <laughs> I started my business. I actually left academia in 2014. I started my business and I've been able to grow and, and have a really successful business and reach people, actually coached or spoke on all seven continents, even Antarctica, yeah. which is like amazing. I'm that's so grateful. A, that's incredible. I haven't heard many people giving speeches in an hour in Antarctica. I can't even say it. <laughs> yeah. I coached a client. Basically, I knew a client was going to Antarctica and I actually taught her dynamic posture, what I'll teach you today. Wow. I, I, knew she, I heard she was going to Antarctica and I messaged her and I said, hey, I want to coach you when you're in Antarctica. So she got to Antarctica we got on a Zoom call. I coached her. And then because of the dynamic posture, which I'll talk about today, she told me afterwards she was actually able to experience Antarctica and actually take more in. Um, wow. because, yeah, see more and receive more and take wow. more in um, because of the 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 way that I told her to hold her body and, and, her, and her head and her eyes and all this stuff. So I'll wow. teach you that today because whether you're taking in Antarctica or you're taking in just life, your business, your family, you know, um, the moments of silence, even we can come from a place of presence and taking it all in, or it can come from a place of like too much thinking or, yes. or, or over analyzing and, and we yeah. miss out on life. And I know everybody here, yeah. you know, understands that I was asked yesterday in a message from somebody who was doing some marketing toward me. I said, um, what do you do for motivation? I love business? this. Yeah. I, I, I was, I'm so excited for you to d dive into this. And, you know, it's interesting that, um, I, I live in Southern Chile. So I want to, I want to ask you, by the way, you guys, if you're watching on YouTube, I have an eye patch on, mm -hmm. uh, if you're on the podcast, uh, listeners to the audio, you can't see this. I had a simple cataract surgery. So I get to be a pirate today and wear a <laughs> sexy eye patch, but yeah, tell us about motivation. How do we get motivation? Do we need motivation? And I, I know you're going to surprise us with the answer. So I was asked this exactly motivation. And I, and I sat with it for a moment and I, I had no answer because at first, because I thought to myself, I don't need motivated. And many people may have heard this before. Like we don't need motivation. Motivation comes from the outside. Usually yeah. um, we need inspiration and, and what inspires you is what will move you motivation inspiration motivates you so inside gets going for the motor to get going and so you know what what inspires me well the truth is i'm inspired by the people of the world i've worked with people on all seven continents right i wake up wanting to help people i am naturally wired that way it's not like something i had to really develop i get joy out of helping people and so if you want to be unleashed, if you want to be unstoppable, like this podcast is all about, there has to be some sort of inspiration inside energy that will motivate you, get your motor going, get the body going, get you going. And if you're not inspired by helping people or doing something like it's you're, 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 you, you need to figure that out. <laughs> you need to go yeah. and figure out what does you know, wake you up. And, and so I, I love to do this whole dynamic posture talk because there might be people out there right now. So you might be the kind of person who's done all the work on yourself and you're still not getting the results. Like you might've done the mindset work. You might be doing energy work, but you wouldn't, if you're not creating number one, the body shape that goes along with the mental work and number two, the feeling state that goes along with the energetic work it's not going to work. So you have to have the physical form of I am healthy. I am wealthy. I am rich. I'm loved. So if you're sitting there in a static shape, which I'll talk about in a moment, but if you're sitting there static versus dynamic here, static shape versus a dynamic shape, the mindset works not going to work. If you're not feeling the feeling of what you're speaking, what your energy, what you want this this whole inspiration if you're not feeling the inspiration 
it's not going to come to you. Every wisdom tradition, all of these manifestation texts, you know, from mm-hmm. age, age old wisdom. Yeah. It's, it's the feeling state that yeah. actually gets you what you want. It's not the thinking. It's not the yeah. thoughts. It's not the thoughts. It's not the thoughts. Mindset work is great, friends. You need it. We all need it. Like we have to change our thought patterns to be in alignment with what we want. However, if you don't come like pair the physical form to the thought patterns, you're not going to get what you want. It's just not going to happen. Or you're going to get it like in a weird way and like a wonky way and not in the timing you want. You're like, that's not yeah. what I wanted. Well, you weren't feeling it. So I believe not just from some woo woo out there thing, but actually from experience in my own life, um, changing the physical form and changing the feeling state is the way to master manifestation, to really bloom yeah. in your life. I love so this. It, it, I think this is such a great conversation. And there's so much alignment here because, yes, we are doing neuroscience work and we are re coding our beliefs from limit limiting beliefs to limitless beliefs. But the interesting thing that aligns audience that I want to remind you of right now, our listeners, is that a belief is a thought plus a, an emotion together. And so the thought fires before the emotion, but it fires within microseconds before. So for me, I was a classic overanalyzer and circulating thoughts big time. And so it was being able to know that I could change that to really lean in to the integrated me through this neuroscience process. And you're really addressing that here, Leela. I love this because And I love the inspiration piece. How powerful is that, right? Because we talk a lot about it being internal versus external. We, we spend up, we spend so much time with performance based acceptance and putting our value with our behavior and thinking we need everybody's approval or even living everybody else's plans for our lives. And here it is going to the internal of inspiration. What inspires you? I think this is so beautiful and powerful. And putting together the feeling is absolutely a part of our belief work and with this dynamic posturing. So I'm excited to Mm -hmm. hear even more. Yeah, I love what you, I love when you were, so you were a guest in my group recently and I love when you said this whole, you know, um, I forget how you just put it. High performance acceptance. Is that what you said? Called it? Performance based acceptance. Performance so- based acceptance. Yeah. So I love that because that's actually how I got into this whole dynamic posture thing. Mm-hmm. I, being an academic, you know, um, I was always, you know, go, go, go perform <laughs> high level. I wanted to get the best grade in the class. I wanted to be the best teacher at the university, right? I wanted to get all the certifications, everything. What I was doing, um, you know, I grew up in an abusive home uh, and I was seeking love on some level. I know, you know, so keep it simple. No, no need for a story. Yeah. I was seeking love through my high performance life. And then what I recognized, I hit a point of adrenal burnout. Uh, I was going through a divorce and I had high blood pressure. Wow. And I thought, something's got to change or I'm going to die. <laughs> right. You know well, what I mean, I'm, this is not the way I said, I'm smart enough. I work hard enough. I'm going to yeah. figure this out. You know, I can definitely smart. relate. And our audience, um, many of you can relate. We all have trauma. So, so w- how did you figure out that you were looking through for love through your performance? How, how did that come to you? Well, the, that didn't come to a long time later. The truth is after I did a lot of work on myself and recognized like, oh, geez, you know, there was a moment, there's been moments over time, I would say. Yeah. There was a moment where I was going through all these challenges. This is about a decade ago. And I, I remember saying to myself, I'm smart enough or I'm smart. I work hard. Why can't I figure out this life thing? And so what happened was I was at, um, at a workshop in Long Island and this is what I'm going to share with you guys today, how to, how to change your physical form. 
to meet what you want. It's, and I, I physically felt love for myself for the first time. Wow. And I was um, uh, in stillness, mm -hmm. breathing into my heart space, like nothing fancy, no self-love, no getting a massage, you know, no, all this thing people talk about self-care. No, it was literally being with myself. I love the word belief because it's belief, being. Stays. I love that. Not the thinking, wow. like it's part of it, but it's the thinking in uh, manifestation of our physical form. Yeah. And so it was through this dynamic posture training, which is, um, it's a movement training. It's like, it's kind of like yoga, you know, yoga is really just about embodiment and all this kind of stuff, but it's, it's almost like curvy bouncy yoga, what I call it. Like, <laughs> it's I love that. It's more of a lifestyle training. It's not necessarily mm -hmm. like do these like inhale, exhale, up, down, in, out poses, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. different. But what I learned, what I felt that day was physical love for myself for the first time. I didn't even know that. Ex I, like I had felt love for other people, but not for myself. Mm. Now, I thought I love myself, but I felt it mm. and I chased it. I literally, I left my academic career. I moved across the country to, from Ohio, mm. from Columbus, Ohio to Denver, Colorado. I had no job, no home, and I knew nobody. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. I got here on a Friday, had a job by Monday. Um, yeah. just because I had to get, you know, on my feet here. And mm -hmm. then I made friends and I have a great, beautiful life, you know, ever since. But what I learned was that I had been told my whole life and many people to, uh, you know, stand up straight. Put yes. your shoulders down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I had, been, I had been moving from a very linear standpoint. I've been go, 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 do, do, do. And I wasn't really feeling anything. I was I would work out, I'd do fitness stuff and go do Zumba at the gym or whatever, you know, do a yoga class here and there. But I was still thinking. I was I'm a high level intellect. I'm an academic. I have a massive processor in my head. Yeah. I can take a lot of information and whittle it down to the essence of the essence of the essence. Like that is what I'm good at. But I wasn't happy and I wasn't actually yeah. getting the life that I wanted. I was unhappy and my life was like falling apart. It was so strange. I was like, what? I worked so hard. What's going on? Yeah. So I had to really, for about two years, deep dive into myself. Then I started a business because I'm a high performer. When I, when I learn, I want to teach. Started a business start, and started helping other people, you know, learn what I'm, what I'm going to share with you. So, yeah. you know, this whole system that I teach, I've created my own modality out of it. Um, to make it simple and accessible for, for leaders that don't have a lot of time. I teach this in 10 minute you know, uh, uh, timelines. I love that. But, yeah. yeah. It's people don't have time and they're not consistent. So I'm like, I'm going to make it easy. So yeah. you can be consistent. So I'll give you just three simple steps today. Yeah. To, 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 to embody the physical component of your mental mastery. Yes. So if, yeah. Mm -hmm, if you're working with somebody like Carol, where you want to change your mind, what I'm going to do is just pair it with a physical form. So the first, there's three H's. Okay. So we're not going to stand up straight. We're going to be curvy. First of all, we're not going to, we're not going to move linear. We're going to move uh, uh, more in a, a curvy, non-linear way. Well, I have so a gymnastics background. So, and ballet, you know, shoulder uh, gymnastics is always curved forward. You know, you're, you're curving in, but the, so I'm totally relating to this here because, you know, ballet is shoulders down and back and it's super powerful. Isn't it high achiever? You and I as high achievers, um, I'm loving this conversation with you, Leela, because really this is so powerful because you're exactly right. We're so used to going goal, next, goal, next, never pausing. And I think it's profound to point out that it was in the stillness that this bouncy, dynamic, curvy movement modality came to you. And so, yeah, tell us more. I'm, I'm totally sold. I'm in totally enrolled is what I meant to say and sold. Yeah, absolutely. This is amazing. So we'll go over the three H's. It's simple to remember that way. Three H's, heart, hips, head. 
So the heart, heart piece, hips, people, head, heart, hips, head. Yeah. Heart, hips, head. Most people say live from your heart, move from your heart, you know, create from your heart, but nobody teaches how. So I'm mm-hmm. just going to share how today. So you, your heart is in a space in your body, uh, uh, within your rib cage area. So most people never really think about the, the alignment of the ribs, the heart area, the rib cage area, instead of having your heart rib cage area over your hips, that's a static posture. Just a teeny bit, even now as you're listening, move your heart forward, your ribs forward in front of your hips, just a little bit. It is going to require you to relax your belly, not have a flat abs, tight belly. Flat abs, tight belly can actually trigger stress chemicals in your body because it's a pulling in, tighten your body, wow. your brain thinks something's wrong. Yeah, we got to learn how to relax the belly so that the heart can actually be more dynamic, a little bit forward in front of the hips. So when you're sitting, when you're standing, when you're walking, See if you can literally, physically move from the heart. So we usually move from the head. The head leans forward. We usually move from the feet. The feet move forward. Yeah. Practice sitting, standing, walking through space, literally with your heart leading the way. When you open a glass, uh, like a jar, a pickle jar, when you when you pick up your cup, See if you can initiate the movement from from the heart heart. instead of the hand from the heart first. And and it takes a conscious awareness that's not always easy. It takes us to slow down. But as we move our bodies through the world, Mm -hmm. the world moves through our body. You know, it is it is you will have people noticing something different. They won't know Mm -hmm. what you're doing. But they'll notice like, what is different about you? Because you literally have your mind in your body. If you can feel your heart beat, you're in your heart. Mm. Your consciousness, your mind is in your heart. If you cannot feel your heartbeat, which I understand is very difficult for some people. Some people, it's very difficult to feel their heartbeat. But if you can't feel your heartbeat, you're not in your body. You're in your head. And you need to be in your body. You've got to practice. You can practice with breathing. And there's all sorts of exercises I could share you know, another time. Mm-hmm. but we have to actually live from the heart. We got to, so the heart piece is move it forward a little bit and then always all day long, as much as you can until it becomes normalized in your body, lift your heart to the sky just a little bit. Let that heart lift up towards the heavens, live up to the sky, whatever you want to call it. The energy of lifting your heart will uplift you literally inside inspiration breathing into the heart lifting the heart with your mind is embodying the mental components of what you want i guarantee whatever mindset work you're working on you want to have more love more more heart opening so bring your mind into that space so if you're doing mindset work lift the heart as you're doing the mindset work that's that's a huge piece so that's the heart piece heart up heart up heart up Hard up. I could, I mean, if that's the only thing you learned today, <laughs> that would be the essence of everything. So the second wow. piece, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's huge. So anybody who's out there who works with people, like keep the feeling state, you know, in mind when you're working with people, cause they might say the mindset work, but you don't feel it. Yeah. I have my yeah. clients speak, speak new thought patterns and until I feel it until they feel it, it's not really embodied. And so I always tell them, I say, say that from your heart. I just, I have a teacher training program. I'm working with clients right now and uh, my new teacher is coming up and um, I had them do some uh, new thought pattern programming yesterday. And it took them about two to three times, which is pretty fast, two to three times of saying something before it actually was from the heart. So we got to have that heart piece involved. Heart up as you walk, heart up as you sit, heart up as you as you drive, you know, as you cook dinner, heart up, you'll notice that we tend to collapse in the heart over time. And that's why people have shoulder issues, for example, or back issues. It's just the heart, the ribs, not expanded on the inside, inspiration again. So heart up, heart up, heart up. The second piece is hips. So we've been often told in a lot of like exercise classes or 
uh, to like tuck the tailbone, like ballet is a perfect example. We also, uh, when we sit, we sit on our butt instead of um, our, we need to sit on our legs, not the butt. The butt is not meant to be sat on. The tailbone needs to go back, uh, not down. Think about an animal. It's very easy to see in nature. If a tail is tucked on a dog, they're in a fear state. So it's actually creating fear, anxiety, overwhelm, you know, stress, all this stuff. And we don't even know it. The physical form has a, an influence on the, on the mental capacity our cognition. Even we might feel foggy. We might feel tired. We're draining our energy by keeping that tailbone down. So, so it powerful. Might, it's huge. It's like, Oh my mm-hmm. God, I'm like the queen of being able to see what's going on with the body and how it's relating to life. And it's, it's age old wisdom. It's not like I'm the only one. I just learned it and I'm uh, yeah. embodied it, I've taught it, and I'm super intuitive with it. So when the, when the tailbone's down, when the, when the butt is tucked, and if you're the kind of person who used to have a butt and your butt's gone away, we, it's not about just aesthetics. It's actually the butt we need for energy. We need to actually have the butt lifted, the glutes lifted to motivate, motor. That is our motor, uh, is those big muscles. And so getting the hips to go wide and back and the tailbone up um, and sitting on your legs when you're driving, when you're working and, and, you know, learning how to walk in a new way so that your butt goes up and not down. Most people, I'll just give you this little tip. If you walk, which almost everybody does, unless you're from a tribal culture, if you walk heel toe, your heel hits first, your butt's going down. So you got to learn how to walk different. Now, this isn't easy because you've been walking the same way your whole life or you had an injury or something happened and you had to walk this way. So, but learning how to walk in a way where your butt goes up, tail goes up, will actually give you more energy. You'll feel more rooted to the earth and you'll actually have ideas flow through you with greater ease. I love this. And one of the things we talk about all the time, when you say it isn't easy, we can actually recode that that it is easy. And that's, you know, changing the neural networks. And also something to, you know, remind you listener, is that it takes an average of 67 days to make a change that's going to now be operating in your subconscious and be protected that way. So as you're practicing the heart being out and up and you're practicing sitting on your legs and keeping your tailbone up. Remember, step by step, small changes bring big results. And you can do this over an average of 67 days and it's going to be permanently wired in for you. Yes. I work with a lot of women, for example, who are in their 60s and they're at a point where their body isn't as... Mm, strong and pliable and fluid as they want it to be. So they work with me and they, I literally have women who've been walking the same way for 60 years. And all of a sudden they change the way they walk and their bodies are more youthful than they were in the twenties. Like they can, wow. I've got a client who has been working with me. She's like um, 62. She's playing wiffle ball with her kids. She's her, you know, grown kids. Yeah. Um, it's like playing tennis. Now she just started running again. And she had a, like a, a hurt ankle from a decade ago from an injury and wasn't able to hop, you know, skip, walk any, or, you know, walk without feeling hesitant. Um, and so now she's like doing all this like sporty stuff that she hasn't been able to do since she was like, wow. it's amazing. That's why I'm like, Oh my gosh, the human, we have so much capacity. If we just choose the, like you said, it's like, you know, it's easy to change. It's easy to change 67 days. So yeah. the head piece I'll give you, because this kind of links back to the Antarctica story. Yeah. is you know that client she had her heart up she had her hips back where she could wag her tail you know and the and the I piece love that. Of, yeah if you can't <laughs> wag your tail you're you're too tight i feel like um, a puppy it is it's like happy puppy if you if you yeah. embody happy puppy you're i promise you you'll manifest more people will be want want to be around you more they want to give you more you'll be able to receive more you're more open and so the last piece is the head uh, most people look number one too close. So we're looking, we're our eyesight. We're just looking at stuff pretty within like a, a foot to yeah. a few feet of us. Like we don't really look out into the distance, but mm. too close and then down too much. And so we've been co- kind of told to like tuck the chin and and then the the back of the neck goes flat. Well, 
<laughs> the cell phones are looking down, looking down, looking down, yeah, right? The young, right. young people have actually way worse posture. When I work with a youngster, way worse posture than when I work with an older person, their head in wow. terms of their head. They're wow. so humped over like an old yeah. lady youngster. So I have a big passion. I just um, finished up working with a UK client. Uh, she's 11 and um, completely- 11 years old. 11 years old. Wow. Completely changed her posture. She's a tennis savant. I worked with her and her father and and she's actually now at the point where she can beat um, uh, 15 year olds and 11 and 15 is a very different. Yes. Uh, yeah. So we, we changed the way she, she, her body posture, we changed the way she moves and everything. And they're actually in the, they live right by Wimbledon. They're they're on their way to Wimbledon. Like she's their right. the family calls her the Wim, Wimbledon thir, uh, 2030 pr, uh, winner. So, wow. I mean, she's amazing. So the youngsters have much more of this issue than, than older people even. So I'll give you the tip on the head. So the heart's up, the hips are back. The head is lifted where here's the key. Your eyes are out on the horizon. Mm. Eyes on the horizon. Just I, I want that. everybody to hear what Carol just did. I want you to notice what she just did. She went, mm. why? It feels good. good. <laughs> yes. Imagine looking out into the sunset, the sunrise on the ocean, the mountains, a beautiful prairie, like something beautiful where you look out into the distance. Just remember that feeling state that if you look out onto the horizon, it feels yeah. good. Why? Your body is much more in alignment to its natural state, number one. And number two, you're more open. Wow. There's been studies done in China with children who have pass a ball close and pass a ball far. And the eyesight of the children who pass the ball far is significantly higher. Really higher. They don't need glasses at a young age. We need as humans to look far away and with computers and cell phones and just this kind of myopic <laughs> uh, modern day lifestyle, we yeah. don't look far out enough. You can wow. improve your eyesight by literally just looking out into the distance and letting, you'll notice when you do it, your head goes back and lifts mm -hmm. up a little bit. So heart up, hips back and head up so your eyes are on the horizon. I tell you, this is so exciting to me and to um, you listener, our high achiever, our bold leader. It's so powerful, isn't it? Because this is something really different. Like this is all new. It is completely different than what I've heard from, you know, actually physicians and, uh, you know, sports therapists and specialists and uh, trainers. So it, it's, I love this because it does feel good. It feels natural. And would you lean in and talk about with this being dynamic, which totally makes sense versus static, I want to, I want to make sure that you listener are hearing why this is the case, why it is dynamic versus static and br bring us to the wealth piece through this. Oh, I love it. So the first piece static is a straight line spine. Okay. Just kind of put it that way. Staying still more military tailbone down belly tucked, shoulders yeah. back, chin tucked, back of your neck flat. It's static. Yeah. yeah, You can actually even sit in stillness with a dynamic shape though. Dynamic is curvy where the tailbone's back. Hey, I hope you've been enjoying this amazing conversation with Leela Veronica about dynamic movement. We are doing a bonus episode to this, a part two, this coming Monday. So watch for that. We're normally released on Thursday, but there will be a part two bonus episode this coming Monday with Leela Veronica. Look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Unleashed Unstoppable podcast with your hosts, Alex Ann Carter and Cal Register. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review and subscribe. That's all for this episode, Wildly Ambitious Leaders. 
See you next week.